Thank you. Um, Thank you. I was in a discussion with my neighbor this past Sunday, and I'm a Catholic, and she's a Presbyterian, and we've never had any problems until we started discussing religion. Mm. And she more or less told me that I was kind of stupid and a fool for believing in the Eucharist. And she said, I could not possibly believe that that was really the body and blood of Jesus. And I said, I'm sorry, I do believe that with all my heart. And um, she proceeded to tell me after that that uh, I was terribly wrong and I needed to, needed to be straightened out on my beliefs. And I told her, I said, well, you know, if I did not believe that this was the body and blood of my Lord and Savior, there would be no point to my faith. And she said, well, what? There isn't any point to your faith because it's just a symbol. And we ended up with a heated debate. And as you said earlier, I almost lost my 40 year old temper. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell her if she doesn't mind reading chapter 6 of uh, St. John's Gospel. Uh, our, la our Lord is very. You see, the, the, the problem a lot of people find is they make it a symbol. But do you realize everybody listening to Jesus at that moment walked away? Yeah. Now, Jesus is God, Son of God. So he was God, is God, always will be God. And he took on our human nature, but he never ceased to be God. Now, as God... When you have everybody turn around and walk away, as she does, or did, then you'd be obliged in justice. Jesus is obliged in justice not to allow all those people to walk away because they misunderstood. He's obliged in justice to say, now, wait a minute, I, I'm speaking symbolically. But he didn't do that. Let's see what he did. I tell you solemnly. Now, when the Lord says solemnly, you better listen. If you do not eat my flesh, the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Now, he says that three times. Three times. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. But he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, it says repetition over and over and over, lives in me, and I live in him. So whoever eats me will draw life from me. Now, he taught this doctrine. There's only two times in the whole scripture where the use of doctrine is used. He taught this doctrine at Capernaum in the synagogue. Our Lord would not lie. You, you cannot ever say Jesus lied without being Satan. After hearing many of his followers said, this is intolerable language. Oh, now your friend said that, huh? How could anyone accept it? Is that what she said? And Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it. And he said, does this upset you? Huh? What if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? See? Now, you tell her to read that. He said, there are some of you who do not believe. Ah, oh, you got a friend who does not believe. For Jesus knew from the outset who did not believe. <coughs> he went on and he said... What about you? Do you also want to go away? You realize our dear Lord was willing to put aside his entire 33 
years, his, all of his ministry of three years, he was willing to lose all of his disciples. He turns around. The only ones he had left were 12 men. He's willing to put aside his entire ministry and all of his chosen ones. Will you also go away? And Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we believe you are the Holy One. Ah, you see? So, my friend, you go on believing because you have the truth. 